It is alumni weekend here in Trinity, everybody, and it is almost time for some week nine action here in San Antonio. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Tiger Network. I am Caleb Reed, joined by our color commentator, Luke Terry, and today's matchup features the number six rated Tigers taking on the Millsaps Majors in an SAA conference matchup and really a tale of two different teams. Trinity rolls into this game with a 20-game winning streak in SAA play dating all the way back to 2020. And they have a 37-7 and conference record since joining the conference in 2017. Luke, what do the Tigers need to do today to make that streak extend out to 21? Well, what Coach Urban always tells us in our weekly meetings is that they want to control football games, and that's what they've been great at doing the last few years. I think the last couple of seasons we saw a defense that absolutely dominated in the run game just shut other opponents down. But this year, it's really been Tucker Horn and this offensive unit that have stepped their game up, and they've played full football games all season long. I think if they win in every facet of the game, they've been great on special teams as well, then they're not going to have any issue this afternoon in keeping up that conference winning streak and extending that to 20-plus games. Tucker Horn has been absolutely lights out this season in terms of his performance on the field. Second, not only... Or, or, well, sorry, first in the SAA, but second in the entirety of NCAA in terms of his completion percentage, also in terms of his passer rating, sixth overall. He is one of the best quarterbacks in NCAA Division III right now, and he has definitely been the reason behind a lot of their success. Trinity enters this game against Millsaps, one of the more historic rivalries uh, in the SAA, 43 games have been played between these two teams. Trinity is 21 and 22 all time. However, their last loss was back in 2018, a 7 to 10 loss here in San Antonio, and we are in for an absolute treat. Weather is looking fairly good. There were some clouds earlier this morning, but they have cleared away and Perfect time for Alumni Weekend here for everybody to be able to come out and support Trinity. Yeah, and it looks like Tucker Horn and Ryan Merrifield will come off the field, two captains for the Tigers today, having deferred the opening kickoff. So that side of the ball, the defensive unit that the team's really hung its hat on the last few seasons is going to get the opportunity to come out first and set the tone here this afternoon for a Millsaps Majors team that has really struggled this year. One in seven overall, one in five in SAA play. It's a young team overall is what the roster really looks like. And I think that's what we've seen across the SAA as a whole. I think Trinity certainly has the seniority and the age and experience matchup advantage in pretty much every game that they've played in the conference so far. But I think it goes to, you know, provide a lot of hope in regards to the rest of the conference and what they're going to look like moving forward. Really good young recruiting classes to build upon. It's been mentioned a lot throughout the year. Trinity bringing in 16 fifth year seniors, of course. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the ball, Millsaps, 64 of the 90 players on their roster are freshmen or sophomores. That is a huge experience advantage. But for now, we are just about ready to get this one off. Tyler Huddle getting ready to kick this one away. Looks like it's going to be number seven, Tay Hills, in the back. Joined by Brandon Butler, number eight. And we are just about ready for football here in San Antonio. Kick is away, and this game is underway. And it's going to be a touchback right in the middle of the end zone. So Millsaps is going to get it started here on the 25-yard line. Frankly, so many numbers that we could call out as the defensive unit takes the field. Caleb Harmel, All-American, in the middle playing that linebacker position, wearing number 21, but also good to shout out Mac Douglas, number zero on the defensive end, moving to the top of your screen, coming off of a week where he earned SAA Defensive Player of the Week honors. 
not to mention the linebacker core, but also on the defensive line. And that is going to be the snap to Gray Jennings. Douglas off the edge. Almost got the sack. It's going to be a throw, and it's going to be intercepted, Caleb Harmel. First play of the game, and it is an interception right at midfield. It looks like, I think he had both hands on it, but the way he fell to the ground, the ball hit first, and it jarred it loose. It was really close. I think he did have that one secured. He just couldn't fall onto his side and roll, and instead that ground caused the contact to force that one out, and it's going to be a pretty lucky play. Getting the replay there, and yeah, looks like the ground knocked it loose, so Jennings going to get a second chance here. Pressure coming in his face, breaking down, breaks out of a tackle, and he's going to run, and he's going to get up to the 30-yard line. That's going to, he's going to be brought down by number 40. That's going to be Cade, Ru or Cade Rapson. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen the Tigers here at home. Last time out, it was the center Colonels, and it was Jack Goman, sophomore for center college, playing quarterback. He did a really good job of not forcing anything. We've seen young quarterbacks all year, and we're going to have to see the same thing for this Millsaps team. It's just taking what is given to them, not trying to force the issue too much. Jennings takes off with it on the read option. He's going to get up to about the 36-yard line before being brought down, and that is going to be a Millsaps first down there on third. And what Sinner did so well in that game with Goman was keeping him upright, but he really held up his end of the bargain and not forcing the issue, throwing the ball away when there was nothing there. I think Jennings got pressured on that first play, wanted to get the ball out, try and make a big play, and it almost cost them. Harmel again nearly coming away with that interception. Jennings with six interceptions on the year so far, almost made it seven, but fortunate that Harmel wasn't able to hang on to it. Jennings out of the shotgun, going to take the handoff, and that's going to get smothered immediately. Harris good behind the line, and you cannot talk about Harris enough. He is just such a force on the defensive line, and he gets another tackle for a loss right there. I mean, you look at these guys on that defensive front, Harris good, Jacob Munoz, who a couple plays ago had some nice penetration himself. They're not the most physically imposing from a height perspective. They both come in at under six foot, but they have immense strength. And I think that size that they do have, being about 5'10", 5'11", helps them win in gaps really quick. They move so, so well for those interior D linemen. It's gonna be a read option, and that is smothered immediately. Carson Bird with another tackle for a loss. I actually got to speak with both of those guys over the weekend, both uh, Harris and Carson, and they mentioned both of them absolutely outstanding work. They gave a lot of credit to the entirety of the defense. And this is a defensive unit that is very, very well coordinated, gels very well together, and is so far proving it right here with a huge third down to go. Jennings back, gonna take the snap. He's gonna drop back to pass. He's gonna throw it and it's gonna be incomplete. Off the ground, intended for Connor Ladner, the junior out of Diamond Head, Mississippi, and that is going to force a punt for the majors. Yeah, and that time Jennings with a little bit more time to throw. That one skipping in there, but ultimately might have been in their best interest. It was Casey Hampton in the area. Looked like Quinn McDermott. Both safeties closing in on that football. It ultimately bounced in there. It seemed like the Tigers were ready to pounce on it and maybe jump that route. So here we go, getting ready for the punt. It's it's mishandled, going to throw it forward, and it's going to stay in bounds. And they're just going to say, well, there's a flag down. We're going to see what happened. That was such a weird play. Yeah, because it was more of a push forward. I think when you see something like that happen, a throw and a flag in the area, it's an intentional grounding call. But we'll wait for the ruling from the referees. I think that is the case. They're going to give that signal of intentional grounding and point in the direction of Millsaps. Since it was on fourth down, it will result in a loss of down. And the Tigers, that defensive unit, does exactly what they were called to do to start the game. A huge stop there on fourth down, a ton of pressure. 
and now the offense is going to take over and start the game in the red zone. Ethan Klapich, the junior punter, was the one who mishandled that snap. He's had 35 punt attempts so far this year, and he's definitely going to want to forget number 36 for sure. As we get to see Tucker Horn out there with Winston Hutchison right next to him to his left side. It's going to be play action. Toss out to Taylor. Taylor going to go and get up to about the seven-yard line before getting pushed out of bounds and set up a second down and short. And Merrifield's clearly received a ton of attention for what he's done. If you look at his stats all year, they've been great. But this entire receiving core has been phenomenal. And it's the way that everyone interacts around the ball handler. On that one at the bottom of your screen, you might have seen Ryan Merrifield with a nice block on the perimeter and it freed up Taylor well enough to get him inside the 10-yard line. Horn takes the snap. It's going to be a throw, and it's going to be a catch. Early touchdown for Caleb Crawford, and the Tigers take a 6-0 lead with the PAT pending. He did it in style that time. Looked a little bit like Trey Turner, a baseball player, sliding in to grab that one, but popping up pretty quick after the fact. Just two plays for this offense, and obviously the field position playing a big role in that one, but shows you just how quickly they can strike. Offense and defense working very well. And that is something that we talked uh, to Coach Jeremy Urban about yesterday. He mentioned that the reason for the Tigers' success, not just last week with the 700 yards against Southwestern, but just overall the season has been playing a complete three-phase football game. Offense, defense, and special teams, and all three of them came together on that drive as that is going to be a huddle kick that actually looks like it got over the fence. They're back over by the flag. And so it is going to be a 7-0 lead for the Tigers here with 11.28 remaining in the first quarter. Early score for Trinity, and they have done that so much throughout the year. Yeah, I remember a couple of weeks ago in a conversation we had with Coach Urban, he talked with us about wanting to really start games well, not just play complete games, but start them from that first possession, try and get into the end zone. It was something that they struggled with just a bit against St. John's. They got stopped at the goal line. And then when they came home against Mary Harden Baylor and those next couple of games here in San Antonio against Rhodes, they really wanted to hammer that point home, try and get on the board first thing, and really establish themselves, and it's exactly what they did here this afternoon. Slow starts have definitely been killer, but they have avoided it so far here as Huddle is going to get ready to kick it off again. Again, it is going to be Hills and Butler in the back as this kick is away, and oh, it's gonna end up just out of bounds. And that one was angled, it looks like from our perspective, that one probably went out of bounds at about the one or two yard line. So it was very close from Huddle to getting that one across the plane of the goal line, but instead it'll move the ball out to the 35 for the majors. So better starting field position for Millsaps this time around. Certainly gonna have to get something going here early on if they want to have some success today. Very, very unfortunate miscue there for Huddle. He has been so incredible this season. He had 10 touchbacks last week alone, 26 on the season so far, and just an unfortunate mistake here. And we're going to see a different quarterback out here as that is going to be a run out to the left side and goes down after a gain of about five. That's going to be number nine, Zion Anders, the freshman quarterback, had 16 carries for 130 yards and a touchdown uh, at Barry, did not play last week against center. And Millsaps has liked to use him a lot as sort of like a wildcat option. Haven't seen a lot of throws out of him, only five attempts. Yeah, and an interesting formation. You have the three in the backfield, including Anders, who's in the middle of that trio. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot of options, a lot of running backs coming across his face, as we do right here. The give to number three, that's Josh Richardson, who's been this team's leading rusher. 
It's only going to be a gain of a couple there. Tried to see if I could find Jennings on the sideline, but I could not. Looks like he's right around that yard marker, that first chain where they had their original line of scrimmage for this possession. Oh, yeah, there we go. So he's standing right on the sideline. I think we're just going to see a Millsaps approach today where they try and change things up, give this Tigers defense some different looks. And this time around, it's given them about seven yards, so third in very manageable rate here if they can move forward. Anders takes a snap. It's going to be a handoff, and there's a flag out. That run is stuffed immediately. Yeah, and that one, that flag coming right at the snap. It looked like the wide receiver on the bottom of your screen moved right before the ball was to be snapped, right there. He wasn't set for that full second before the ball was actually snapped. But all indications point to Trinity declining that penalty. That is the case. So it's gonna be another fourth down right here, but it looks like the offense is on the field for the moment. Might see just a little bit of a punt considering the fact that we don't have that same trio in the backfield. Yep, Anders remains in. Receivers spread wide. Three to the right, two to the left. You can see what happens here. Might just try and draw Trinity off sides. And we're gonna get a timeout here by Millsaps. So an interesting bit of sportsmanship right there. Coach York trying to maybe draw someone off sides. I thought originally that maybe we would see a little bit of a pooch kick. Ball currently spotted at the 41 yard line. Trinity not with the opportunity to send anyone back to receive it. Not sure if Anders has any experience in his freshman year punting the football, but maybe he would have gotten the benefit of a nice friendly roll on his side. Instead, the majors elected to take the timeout, see if they can get their punter right after the first snap was a little bit high for him and ultimately he couldn't handle it in their first possession of the day. Uh, first year coach, Coach York, trying a little bit of experimentation there. Obviously didn't entirely work out, but you know, it's still early in the game. Anything can happen here with 9.50 remaining here in the first quarter. Klapich back again. This time he handles it well and this time he gets it away. It's going to be taken in by Taylor. Taylor still going. Taylor breaking a tackle and now on the sideline. And he's going to get brought down at about the 43, 42 yard line. There's two flags on the field this time. So we'll have to see what each of those are. One of them on the far right of the field came out after Taylor had received the ball. The other one right near the line of scrimmage. A couple of yards in the direction of the receiver so probably a hold on Trinity that one gonna be a hold on Millsaps we'll see what the second penalty is gonna be but it looks like the umpire is ready to set Trinity back a little bit looks like it was a block in the back there I believe that was number six of Trinity uh, going to be Johnny Kusa most likely getting the flag for that one. So Trinity going to be setting up at about the 28 yard line. Or, no, sorry, my bad, 32 yard line. Only five off. Yeah, and some interesting signaling from the referees as they called out those penalties. Originally they did point in the direction of Millsaps and then for the second flag, they pointed in the direction of Trinity. Usually I think those penalties might just offset, but Trinity knocked a couple of yards after Taylor's nice return. And now they're gonna mark it back a little bit further. So maybe you're right, Caleb, in thinking about the 28 yard line, maybe a little bit further, but they weren't all the way out at the 32 and now they mark it even further further back, so I'm still not entirely sure what's happening here. That's going to be back at the 15-yard line. So, looks like the first call of a penalty against Millsaps might have been accidental. I think just a 
bit of an error, and then I'm sure you were probably right regarding blocking the back call against Trinity, setting him back about 10, 15 yards. Crawford goes into motion. Horn takes a snap. Looks, he's going to throw short, and that's incomplete. Intended for Winston Hutchison, who did not play last week at Southwestern. Again, Tucker dropping back, evaluating all of his options as he went through his read right there. He kind of geared up to launch that one, it looked like, and then ultimately had to check it down. Looked like it came out of his hand just a little bit awkwardly and couldn't connect with his running back on the check down. Play action, going to take the snap, and it's going to go out to Taylor again. Taylor's going to go out of bounds at about the 27-yard line, it looks like. So pretty good play there to set up second and very short. It'd be third and short here after that incompletion on first down, but just one yard to gain and have that offset directly behind Tucker Horn in the backfield. I would anticipate just that run up the gut to get that. And it is gonna be a run to Hutchison. Hutchison gets the first down and a little bit extra there on the run of six. And then I'll set up a good first down and 10 for Trinity. Trinity so far is one of the best schools, not just in the SAA, currently leads the SAA, but also second in the nation in terms of their third down conversions on offense. We talked to Coach Irwin about it and it is just something that this team does incredibly well. Yeah, and it's largely a result of situations just like that one. Very infrequently does this team move backwards. It's almost always no gain, but much more often it's a positive one. They stay ahead of the sticks really well, and they put themselves in third in very, very manageable positions, as they just did on that third and one. The offensive line's been great in protection on third downs, and the running backs have had just a great job of understanding down and distance all year long. They've also been great out of the backfield, as we saw Winston Hutchison catch a little bit of a wobbly pass from Tucker Horn and turn up field for a gain of a couple. That was the freshman, Michael Battle, who got the pressure there on Horn. This is going to be another handoff to, this is going to be Justin Carmouche, I believe, up the middle, and he is going to rumble forward for a gain of what looks to be about six or seven and another Tiger first down. Yeah, and these running backs so far this afternoon running really hard. I give to Hutchison a couple of moments ago. I know he lowered his shoulder and made sure the defender felt it. That time after first contact, Carmouche keeping those legs running, the offensive line providing that extra bit of push to get him across the line to gain and give the Tigers another first down. Horn takes a snap, drops back. He's going to fire deep for Merrifield, and it's incomplete, just a little bit too far. Trying to see who the defender was in coverage there who managed to kind of slow him up. I believe that's number two, Tom Darius Stallion, the sophomore cornerback. And Ryan got that step at the very end right there. It looked like it was just a clean release, one on the outside on a Straight fly route. Tucker Horn overshot him just a bit, but a great opportunity as Trinity's trying to set up the long ball, but complements it really well with a nice quick slant right there over the middle. Looks like that time it was number 18, Carter Self, with a nice catch and run. And again, Trinity just has everything working so far this afternoon. Another first down as they progress into Majors territory. Trinity's not done a ton of deep shot plays. Obviously, they do have that in their arsenal, but it isn't the way that they kill teams. Their main strengths are just on short, sustained, long drives, which is something that Millsaps has really struggled with. Very first possession of the game last time uh, out at center. 60, or, or, or no, sorry, 16 plays, 92 yards in a touchdown drive. Uh, in the opening drive allowed by Millsaps, as that is going to be a run of about five-ish yards. Yeah, pretty impressive right there on that run. Again from Carmouche. It looked like the Millsaps majors did a pretty good job of getting some or getting some penetration, excuse me, on the interior of the line. But Carmouche, recognizing that, did a little bit of a hop step, landed with that left hand on the ground, the ball on the other. 
regained his composure and balance and just darted forward for a quick five yards. Taylor going into motion. Horn takes the snap. He's going to throw it out to the right side and incomplete. Crawford kind of slipped there on the turf a little bit. It has been a little bit wet over the last couple of days. Sun has come out, so hopefully that will not be as big of an issue later on in the day. But might have just slipped a little bit on that maybe still damp turf. Step into incompletion and a third and five. Yeah, third and five from the majors 40. So it'll be interesting to see what the play call is here. Can't tell if that's Carmouche. I think it might be Grigsby in the backfield, but certainly two down territory for the Tigers if they can at least get a couple of yards here, if not the first down. Taylor moving inside on the motion again. Horn takes a snap. He's going to throw it, and that is complete to Grigsby. And Grigsby breaking tackle still on his feet. Finally brought down at the 21 yard line. Legend Grigsby currently leading the team in rushing yards, and he gets some more passing yards there as well. Or sorry, receiving yards. Yeah, and Grigsby, the third running back to check into the game, and the third running back who's just taking the hits and staying upright. Took four, five, six Millsaps majors to ultimately get him on the ground. Great run after the catch stuff right there from the trinity running back this full unit just doing sensational things all season long and complementing each other incredibly well play action horn throws it out to self self breaking a tackle and finally shoved out of bounds at the 15 yard line so a gain of about six there and trinity already in the red zone a place where they are incredibly comfortable. Second in the SAA, 43rd in the nation in terms of offensive efficiency in the red zone. But also on defense, they're first in the SAA, 44th in the nation. So, so this is a team that basically lives in the red zone and loves it in these more compressed spaces. Horn takes a snap, going to throw it out to Taylor. Taylor's got a block and going to get up to about the 10-yard line before getting pushed out of bounds. Now, it looked like that ball might have come out at the end of the play, but Taylor right there on the sideline. I think he was either out of bounds before it came out or he was in contact with it while he was out of bounds. So Trinity able to pick up the first down, as you mentioned, and now, as you also talked about, in this area of the field where it gets really compressed, things become a little bit easier for the defense because there's simply less ground to cover. But again, Caleb, you talked about it. They've been so good in this area of the field. So we'll have to see what they do from here. Horn takes a snap. He's going to drop back. Now he's going to move. He's going to take off with it. And he's going to spin down to about the six yard line. Think back to earlier this year, the end of the St. John's game in week one when they were in this area of the field. Some nice coverage. Zuckerhorn scrambled up the middle and the ball got knocked out. Does a nice job of just taking the couple of yards that were given to him, going down without much of a fight there, but it puts them close to that five yard line, really in a position where they can hand the ball off here. Grigsby, spin move into the end zone, touchdown, and that is going to extend the lead. 13-0 here on the short Grigsby run, and what a play that was. And I think my thinking personally was, Tucker Horn picks up a couple of yards, gets him closer to the five, six yard line, then you have a couple more opportunities to ram it in from there. I certainly didn't think that it would happen on one shot like that, but Legend Grigsby, a couple of times this year, he's pulled that spin move out of his bag of tricks. I remember the one a couple of weeks ago at Barry, seeing that play on Twitter. That one, another sensational move that gets him into the end zone nearly untouched and puts the Tigers up 14-0 here in San Antonio. And we'll see it again right here. Sticks that foot in the ground. Number 43 for the majors just lunging, but just can't contact him as he high steps to the back of the end zone. No one else near him the rest of the way. Gavin Williams was the linebacker who just barely missed, but Grigsby such a shifty runner. It is so difficult to bring him down, and we have seen him 
really confused defenses all season long, just almost impossible to bring down, and he showed it right there. Yeah, and he's been the name we called on this drive, but a name we've called all year long. And again, something I'm sure we've mentioned before, but always noteworthy is the fact that he's a guy that made a positional transition once he got here. Originally recruited as a wide receiver, I think that's why he's so dangerous in the open field, in the passing game, but why he has so many tricks up his sleeve, just like the one we saw right there. He's been a pretty smooth operator in the backfield for the Tigers. Been so difficult to stop Grigsby as that one is going to bounce out of the back of the end zone. Not sure if you could see it on the screen, but there was just an incident. A cooler has just gone down. Just a little bit off the field, so no ice on there right now. Out of your picture, maybe, but two drives for the offense, two scores, exactly what Coach Urban loves to see. Defense has held up there into the bargain. Got to stop. A turnover on fourth down, set up the offense in nice short field position. Did see the Tigers get penalized on that last punt return, something that I think they want to curb, want to control as much as possible. It's going to be Anders who takes a snap, and we're going to get a stoppage here. And that's going to be a penalty on Millsap, so going to move them back five. So interesting to see they go back to Anders here on the third possession of the afternoon. Again, Jennings was the starting quarterback. I'm trying to think back to that last possession. I don't believe we saw Anders with a passing attempt. And yet again here, he's going to take off trying to run it. Anders, uh, only a handful of passing attempts so far this year. Uh, I believe it's only five passing attempts so far this year. 20 yards has not really been able to get a lot out of it. However, on the ground, he has been very impressive. 145 yards so far on the season, uh, as well as the touchdown that he got last week. They have definitely utilized that speed and acceleration, as that is going to be another handoff there. Going to go to Josh Richardson and going to get blown up behind the line. Had a lot of traffic right there. He came off the edge, thought maybe he had a little bit of room, but that time it was number 24, Ryan Arnold, who absolutely upended him, put him on his back. But Caleb, you talk about the lack of passing attempts for Anders so far this year. It really puts this offense at a disadvantage. He's operating an empty set now. He might be forced to throw the football, but they're just so much more predictable. That's going to be a throw, and it's going to be complete to number zero. That's Connor Rucker, the senior wide receiver, who had 35 yards against center on three receptions, his best so far of the year. But really that entire possession, I think the defense knows more often than not, it's going to be a handoff. They're going to run the ball if Anders is in the game. The only reason right there that they had to throw it is because their hand was forced to, more or less. Third and 15, maybe a little bit longer than that after that Ryan Arnold tackle that we alluded to. And then clearly an empty backfield, five receiver set right there just allowed the defense to really pin their ears back, try and get after the quarterback. He was forced to get the ball out quickly. So a nice completion right there for about 10 yards, but in a fourth and 15 situation, or excuse me, a third and 15 situation there, not many times that you're gonna be able to pick up that full amount against this Trinity unit. Trinity so far on third down, third best in the SAA, 75th in the nation in terms of stopping third downs have only allowed a third down conversion on 35%, actually probably less after the last few drives. So this is a very, very stifling defense whenever it comes to any situation, but especially third downs. Klapich gonna be back to punt. It's gonna be Taylor back again. It's a low snap, bobbled, and it's blocked! 
We're gonna see who comes up with it, and it is going to be the majors, but it's gonna be short. And so Trinity is going to take over yet again. Ball on the 32 yard line, and once again, Trinity takes over with fantastic field position, and it's still the first quarter. There's a Millsaps major running off the field, pointing towards the defense, maybe trying to signal a first down. I'm not entirely sure what his plea was there to the referees, but either way, the Trinity offense is going to drop back onto the field. There's been a lot of action so far here in the first quarter. Still over two minutes to play, and Trinity taking over again in opponent's territory. But even on that last punt, Caleb, I think we should go back to it. The one that got off cleanly was fielded by Will Taylor. I felt like that puncher was moving up quickly. The snaps haven't been particularly good. He was a little bit rushed. That one was even shorter. He tried to come up again and get it off, but he's shortening the distance between himself and the defenders that are coming through trying to get the block. And I think that's why the Tigers were able to get home. Horn, deep throw, wide open. Caleb Crawford, no, sorry, that's Carter Self, my bad. Carter Self with a wide open touchdown catch. Trinity, again, taking advantage of what the defense is giving them, and what a huge play that is. Yeah, Caleb, I feel like I should say sorry. I was distracted trying to talk about the punt and the mechanics of it a little <laughs> bit, and this Tigers offense just striking too quickly. I thought we might have a chance to see another score before the end of the first quarter, considering they still had over two minutes left. But I didn't think we'd get a score with two minutes, over two minutes left still here in the first quarter. That's going to be an offsides as this kick is up by Huddle and Good. Looks like that was number 17 of Millsaps. James Jones, the linebacker who jumped a little bit early. We're going to get a replay here. And yeah, just a beautiful throw. Horn was pressured, but Self perfectly wide open. Yeah, and just a total blown coverage in the Millsap secondary. So we see a beautiful shot overhead of the new turf. Just a couple years old here in the Trinity multi-purpose stadium. Gorgeous, gorgeous views here from alumni weekend. I think this is the overhead shot of that last play. And you see Carter Self coming to open in that right corner of the end zone. Just absolutely no one around him. Tucker Horn just putting it right on the money. An easy pitch and catch. Not very frequently that you can say easy pitch and catch from about 40 yards out as Tucker Horn's <laughs> moving to his right. Nobody within even 10 yards of him, almost. That was a complete blown coverage there by the Majors. But again, as Coach Urban said, this team really specializes in taking what the other team gives, not really focusing on external factors and just taking advantage of whatever happens. As Hills is going to take this out of about the two or three yard line and brought down at the 20. And now we are going to see Caleb Harmel and the Tiger defense come back out. It was actually Harmel there who we've called his name a lot so far this season, and he was the one behind that blocked kick. So just adding on to an already impressive stat sheet for this 2023 campaign. Yeah, he's done a little bit of everything. Blocked kicks, interceptions, one of those returned for a touchdown. He's been up back on the punt squad. He ran one on a fake punt last week for a touchdown. He played quarterback in high school, so I wouldn't be surprised if he took some snaps from under center and let it air out a couple of times, but he's been incredibly impressive all over the field. There's just nothing but awesome, spectacular things to say about Caleb Harmel, both on the football field and off. You know, In conversations we've had with Coach Urban, he's a guy that is just constantly studying the game. He's putting the work in, doing his due diligence, certainly, but he's also uplifting his teammates and making sure that they're doing the same, setting a different sort of standard. 
Jennings going to get brought down by a host of Tigers at about the 20-yard line or so. Couldn't see who's going to get credit with the sack. Or, or he went down with about three people on top of him. And that's going to look like it's going to be a mixture of, I believe, Cade Rabson and Jonathan, um, Jonathan Nuobo. Sorry. I mean, honestly, by the time that Jennings was on the ground, it looks like four Tigers had wrapped him up. Unfortunately, I don't think they're crediting for quarter sacks at this time. But there were certainly a host of maroon jerseys in there that got the job done. As Jennings is scrambling again, and that time it's Caleb Harmel yet again wrapping him up around the top. Jennings doing everything he could to put his foot in the ground and get away, but Harmel just so quick, so fast, able to wrap him up around the shoulders and get him down on that third down. Just absolutely nothing going for this Millsaps Majors team this afternoon. The Trinity defense, dominant, utterly, utterly dominant. And they're going to get the ball back to the offense still here in the first quarter. Fourth and 17 coming up. This is a daunting position for Klapich here. He's going to have to set up very, very close to his own end zone. Has to make sure that he does not let the ball go through his hands like he did earlier on today. I have to watch the snap really closely. Again, he's had to move forward trying to meet the football, but it's throwing the timing of the punt off. Again, played a big role in why the last one was blocked. It was skipped in there. So I had to come up, pick it off the ground. I think that Trinity front brought pressure, tried to get home for the punt block, and ultimately they were able to do so. So right now, certainly a lot weighing on the mind of the long snapper. That's Bruce Foster, the sophomore out there with those responsibilities. Foster did not play against center. It's another low one. Klapich able to get it off. Taylor having to go back, going to get it at about the 40-yard line. Going to dart out of one tackle. There's another flag out, and Taylor's going to go down at about the 48-yard line, but this one might be coming back again. It looks like it was Caleb Crawford, number 19, who's coming off the field right now with that preliminary block for his teammate and fellow wide receiver Taylor. That is Taylor doubled back. Might have been a different Tiger who was coming into the picture that I think might have been penalized with another block in the back or similar penalty. And that's exactly yep. what it is. So see 19 right there. Doing a nice job. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That little push that he gave on the shoulder of the defender number 12, Marcus Maleri. And so that'll put Trinity back at about the 41 yard line here. Not sure there. I think there were 11 seconds left on the clock after that last sack. Might have been increased to 17. I'm not entirely sure what the timing is here left in the first. Seems like they had to have put time back on the clock after that Caleb Harmel sack. Yeah, yeah, it definitely seemed like there was a little bit less time remaining than 17 seconds. But either way, we're going to get to see Horn out for another snap. It's going to be play action. Horn moving around, breaks out of the pressure. He's going to move out to his right. He's going to dump it off, and unable to get his feet in bounds is going to be wide receiver number three. That's Cole Monego. And with seven seconds left to go here, we're looking at the final play of the first quarter, which has already been a high-scoring Trinity affair. You see that one. Manego trying to tiptoe along the sideline. Might have just been that that left foot was already out of bounds. It might have just come off the ground before he even contacted the football. But that last one, Ryan Merrifield was streaking across the field from the bottom to the top on another deep route. Millsaps Majors were lucky they were able to get some pressure on Tucker Horn, get him outside of the pocket. Otherwise, I think Trinity might have had another touchdown on that last play. Instead, the incompletion 
the give to, I think that was Johnny Milo on the carry right there. And Trinity's going to have to take this one to the second quarter facing a third and one. Trinity has been absolutely electric so far this quarter. 21-0. Tucker Horn's got a couple. And, of course, that legend Grigsby run. And we are going to take a quick little break here on Tiger Network with the Tigers up. You can check out the stats there. We'll be right back in just a minute here on Tiger Network. And welcome back to Tiger Network here. Second quarter just about to get underway with your Trinity Tigers leading 21 to 0 over the Millsaps Majors. Horn calling out an adjustment here back at the shotgun about five yards deep. Winston Hutchison just behind. Going to take the snap and it is going to be a handoff. Hutchison. Hutchison has a good hole and he's going to get the first down and then some up to the 45 yard line. That was a pretty easy run for the first down whenever it was only third and one. Well, I think you told me over the break, Caleb, it was Hutchison maybe with that last carry of the first quarter. I mean, it looked like he was short, but the referees might have given him the first down. So that last one, a first down carry that went around the right edge for a nice gain of four or five yards. So here instead, a second in medium for the Trinity offense, again in Millsaps territory. It's going to be Hutchison again to the right. It's going to be Horn who takes his nap. It's going to be a throw, and it's going to be another pass out to Hutchison. That's going to be a first down before he gets brought down by number four, Jeremiah Hill, the freshman safety out of New Orleans. Yeah, and I mean, this offense doing a good job right now, but certainly no one has been tasked with too much to do this afternoon. Tucker Horn has checked it down a handful of times, and he's found a couple of receivers open in the end zone. Running backs have been efficient. They've been moving forward on the outside as Tucker rolls to his right here. Horn is going to get it out, and that is going to be complete to, I believe that's the tight end, Tyson Boat, the sophomore. And just a great play on the run there by Horn. Also amazing camera work by everybody here at Tiger Network. Shout out to everybody in the control room and also down on the ground. And it's going to be Horn back again. This time, Carmouche to his left. It's going to be Carmouche with a handoff up the middle. And he is going to get stuffed gain of maybe one first player up and out of the pile was Nehemiah Colson, the sophomore linebacker who's currently the team leader in both tackles and solo tackles 54 tackles on the year and 34 solo he has been one of the biggest defensive forces for the majors so far this year three receivers out to the left two to the right for for Tucker Horn, he is all alone in the empty formation. Takes a snap, he's gonna throw it, and it is going to be caught. Number seven, Ethan Boyer, getting that reception. And now as we set up for third and short, we're going to see what Coach Urban and the Tigers dial up here. Yeah, and again, this time in the red zone, third and short scenario, Talk about them being very willing to go for it on fourth down, but this one only needed about two yards. Certainly very achievable for Carmouche if he gets a handoff here. That is the case. A nice little cut, stays on his feet. A shoestring tackle right there from the Millsaps linebacker core. That time 
It was number 24. See that 24. A oh, great tackle there. That's going to be Luke Bridges, the freshman out of Florida. And quite possibly saved a potential touchdown there. We know how explosive these Trinity runners can be if they get into open space. Almost got it there. Horn takes a snap. He's going to look. He's going to pump. He's going to throw. And that is going to be caught for the touchdown. Incredible play. Justin Carmouche on the reception. And Trinity extends their lead with yet another touchdown. Horn has three so far today. And just an incredible play overall. Yeah, three on the day. And that one might be the best of them so far from our angle at least. Carmouche coming out of the backfield. It was just a little check down from Horn. Usually those running backs have a lot of space, but it was pretty well covered out there by the defensive lineman, Nathan Johnson. From our angle, at least, it looked like he was glued to Carmouche. But instead, Tucker Horn finding a way to just slide that one in there into the arms of his running back who just walked into the end zone. A really, really tight window, and I think we'll get a great shot of it right here. Incredible throw there. It was number 41 for Millsaps. To me, Nathan Johnson, the defensive lineman who just barely was unable to hang on. He was attached to Carmouche's hip right there from that second replay. Could see that arm outstretched trying to get a fingertip on that football, but Tucker putting some nice zip on that one. Carmouche doing a nice job to secure that against his chest. And Trinity very quickly up 28 nothing here in San Antonio. Still over 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Arguably the best offensive showing that we've seen from this team all year. Just four drives, four touchdowns, especially considering how quickly it's all come together. Of course, I mean, the drive before this one, one play, one touchdown, and now we get another, you know, not incredibly quick drive. It did take a little bit of time, but still a very fast, very, very efficient showing by this Trinity offense. Huddle going to kick this one away with the wind behind him. Or no, sorry, into the wind. And it's going to be taken in. Millsaps has a hole, and... That could have been disaster for Trinity before finally being brought down. Cannon Starkey able to get the tackle there. I'm not sure. It might have been Tyler Huddle, the last line of defense. That's Starkey number 38 there on your screen, chasing in pursuit from behind. And that's Tyler Huddle who comes in, gets just enough on him, and then... You're right, Starkey finishing that one from behind, but I think it was a great job from the kicker monitoring that situation pretty closely, but doing just a great job of closing and wrapping the receiver, excuse me, that return man from the majors. Butler has eight returns so far in the year, longest of 19. He just broke that record there. That play went about 30 and could have gone for 90 if not for those two working together. That's the kind of jolt that you want to try and give to your offensive unit is a huge return like that, but penalty again on this offensive line that I think is a little bit rattled given just the fortitude of this defensive front. Again, a ton of penetration. Harris Good, we've talked about multiple times today, getting that quick penetration now it's a freshman center in there for the majors. Not sure of the number. I think it's 71, Eric Contreras, who's being tasked with a couple of really tough defensive tackles in Good and in Munoz both. At that time, it was a great, great play by Anders again, taking the snap, recognizing the pressure, and getting to the outside, demonstrating some of that speed that he has in his legs. We mentioned how young this team is, as that's going to be another run out to Richardson. Going to go out after a gain of about seven or eight. But again, this is an incredibly young team. We mentioned it in the opening, but just in case 
you're coming in a little bit later. 64 of the 90 players on this team are freshmen or sophomores. And, you know, whenever we were talking to Coach Irvin, he mentioned that it is kind of a little bit, um, you know, of a different game plan whenever you're coming in against a team like this. You really need to figure out how to use their advantage or, or lack, or, or, or sorry, experience or lack thereof to your advantage as that play is going to be incomplete. And right now, just trying to simplify things for Anders. Just a quick, easy swing pass right here. Not a bad ball, maybe just a little bit out of the reach of his running back receiver. That time it was number three, it looked like, for the majors, trying to haul that one in. That would be number three again. Josh Richardson unable to haul it in. Maybe bowed that one back just a little bit too much. Couldn't come forward quite in time to secure it. Anders takes off with it. He isn't going to be able to get there, but we do have a flag. Anders unable to get hardly back to the line to gain, much less to the first down. We're going to check and see what the flag was. But on that last play, Connor Ladner, uh, the receiver, very lucky there not to get an injury after Richardson kind of came in from behind. And looks like that is going to be a flag on Millsaps. Number 67, Larry Francois. Uh, missed three games so far this year. And that is going to be a big penalty. Millsaps has 62 penalties so far this year. Has allowed 23 sacks heading into this game. And it has been something they have really struggled with throughout the year. And Trinity coaching staff electing to accept that one, even though it would have been fourth down. It's just the fact that this major team hasn't gone forward all that frequently as Anders is forced to throw again and forced to scramble again. That is going to be Jacob Munoz bringing Anders down. Not sure if they're going to credit that as a sack or a tackle. Couldn't see if Anders was able to get back up to the line to gain, but either way, it is going to set up fourth and very long, fourth and 15, and we are gonna get another Millsaps punt out here. And again, electing to accept that penalty, force them further back on third down instead of fourth and short, really plays into things there for the Trinity defense, able to get more pressure, get them down without much of a gain, if any at all give Will Taylor some more room as there's another high snap, but this one gonna be blown dead. I think maybe a timeout coming for the majors. But I mentioned, not a ton moving forward past the line of scrimmage for the majors. And that was the case in the first quarter, just didn't get the chance to touch on it. I think the statistics that flashed showed that they gained, actually lost a yard in total in aggregate in that first quarter. Negative 14 on the ground for the majors in that first period. Had 13 yards passing, but still haven't gotten much going here in the second as this Trinity defense has remained stout. Mentioned the long snapper, Foster. The sophomore out of Pensacola who has had a lot of struggles so far this year. Klapich, uh last week had one uh, punt that was blocked uh, against center, but also he has not been a bad punter by any means. He's gotten a D3 uh, team of the week twice so far this year, uh, uh, actually in back-to-back -back weeks uh, on October 3rd and uh, September 26th and also got a SAA a Special Teams Player of the Week. So he had a really, really good outing earlier this season uh, against Hendricks, but so far just some issues with the snaps have really, really hampered this Millsap Special Teams. Again, it'll be something to watch here as that Trinity defensive front Brings people forward. Caleb Harmel sneaking up himself, but he'll drop. It's going to be the kick by Klapich. Taylor going to get it at about the 10-yard line. Taylor moving forward, shrugs off one tackler. 
Still moving forward and up to about the 35 yard line. And so Trinity is going to come back out yet again. We're gonna see Tucker Horn still in the game with 8.47 remaining here in the second quarter. It's gonna be Grigsby with him. And this Trinity team has been absolutely electric on offense, scoring more than 30 points in every single game so far this season. And if they score again here, they're guaranteed to pass that number as Crawford gonna be bobbling that one all the way down to the ground. It's gonna be a loss. And it's going to be number five, I believe I saw. I'm, I'm not entirely sure who got that tackle there. It could have been number two, Tondarius Stallion. No, sorry, six. That's Brian Shaw, the defensive back who managed to get that one. And now we're gonna see Taylor going into motion. Horn takes a snap, looks, drops, throws deep, and just out of reach of Caleb Crawford. If he had managed to haul that one in, that would have gone for big yardage, but instead it is just going to wind up being an incompletion and set up third down and long. That time it was Darren Labitt in coverage on Crawford who had just enough separation that he would have been able to haul it in, but Labitt doing a really nice job right there. He limited the separation enough to make or force that overthrow from Tucker Horn, and now Trinity just behind the sticks, something that they aren't very frequently on a third and long. Horn takes a snap, it's a little bit low. He's gonna dump it off to Grigsby. Grigsby spinning and unable to even get close to the first down. That's gonna be fourth down and nine, and that will set up the first Trinity punt that we have seen all day. Eli Gaiman coming out now. And really, it seemed like it was just the timing of things a couple of times on that drive. Maybe thrown off by just some balls that have come out of Tucker Horn's hand. A little bit wonky, something that we've seen a couple of times here today. Talked about it earlier. A little wet here in San Antonio this week. I think it's dried up. I think they've been keeping the football dry more often than not. But that first ball out on the edge was bobbled delayed things enough that majors could swarm to the spot, create that tackle for loss. And then that one, little check down to the running back, just a little bit too much air under it, ultimately able to haul it in, but not before the majors could again swarm, before I think Hutchison could turn up field, successfully trying to get to that yard to gain. And instead, the majors defensive unit really stepping up, doing a nice job there to force the Tigers into a three and out. Butler called for the fair catch there, and so it will set up first down for Millsaps. It's going to be a handoff Richards, or, or sorry, Richardson, who is going to get absolutely blown up behind the line. Tiger defense doing an incredible job of getting tackles for loss, just stuffing runs and stuffing quarterbacks way behind the line. We're going to get to see... Jennings back out again, gonna be back in the shotgun. Gonna take the snap and it's gonna be, no, it's gonna be play action. Jennings steps out of it, gonna throw it in. Oh, just out of reach of Connor Latner. That could have been an incredible play from Millsaps. Just a ton of early pressure right here. Top of your screen, that was Carson Bird who almost had Jennings wrapped up, forced him to roll out. And then it was Casey Hampton, number three, who had fallen down in coverage in the secondary. Jennings had his receiver come open. Jennings has pressure and he is gonna go down. I believe that's Mac Douglas and Carson Bird who teamed up there on the play. And that is going to be absolutely massive. We mentioned Douglas during the opening. 
SAA Defensive Player of the Week last week, and he is going to get another one here. Looked like it was number 26, TJ Scannell, who had just checked into the game at the linebacker spot, who got some pressure in there, wrapped up Jennings' leg. Jennings was able to stay upright, but he just couldn't go anywhere. Good job from Scannell right there to hold on, even though he couldn't bring the quarterback down, trusted that his teammate would get there eventually, and that's exactly what happened. Taylor gonna field this kick and gonna get brought down at about the 36, 35 yard line. And so Trinity once again coming out with fantastic field position. Yeah, and there's just a little bit of a move using that momentum of that gunman for the majors against him puts that foot in the ground to turn back towards the inside, accelerates, gets a nice little chunk of yardage, picks up some extra room for this offensive unit who will start inside the 40 for I believe, what, the third time this afternoon, if not more than that. It's been just a great day field position wise for this Trinity offense who's taken advantage of it several times already. It's incredibly easy to get the scoring going once you get um, offensive possessions. to start out right here as the ball comes loose. I can't tell who jumped on top of it. I believe that it is Millsap's ball. And yes, it is. That fumble is going to be recovered by, I believe, Adrian Turner. Grigsby lost it. We're gonna see who forced it here on the replay. That was number 97 for the majors. Jamison Rankins, the defensive lineman. And then a whole host of majors fall on top of it. So a rare miscue here by Trinity. And really there wasn't a whole lot of pressure, a whole lot of resistance at the line of scrimmage. Grigby, Grigsby, excuse me, got through that level rather easily. He was moving so quick though that he didn't have both arms on the football. Major's doing a nice job stepping up, form tackling, and putting the helmet right where the ball carrier had the ball, knocking that one loose. So a couple of nice defensive possessions in a row for the Majors, despite really good field position for Trinity. After that uh, incompletion, it is going to be second down and 10 once again. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Jennings is gonna be all alone here. As he's going to take the snap, he's going to move up and he's going to throw it and it's going to be incomplete. Intended for, looks like that was Blake Wiley, the sophomore wide receiver out of Montgomery, Texas. Yeah, it's a couple of misses in a row from Jennings. Just created by the movement from one side of the field to the other. He had Wiley in some space right there, just delivered it behind the receiver. Mentioned when Casey Hampton fell in the secondary a couple of plays ago for this offense. He had a receiver open, just delivered the ball behind him. Jennings is going to take off and he is going to get brought down. Carson Bird yet again. Absolutely incredible day for him so far. He's been credited for a couple and now he gets a full, er, a full sack of his own. And that is going to be a massive third down stop to set up fourth and 14. Yeah, really despite the fact that the Majors defense has stepped up a couple of possessions in a row, Trinity defense has remained stout as well, just shutting down any semblance of hope, making sure that this Millsaps Majors offense can't get anything going themselves. Taylor stumbles a little bit, breaks off of a tackle, Breaking towards the sideline, he's got a gap. Across midfield and finally brought down from behind. But a massive return by Will Taylor. And that will set up, again, great starting field position for Trinity to start this drive as we're gonna get the replay here. This was some of the best coverage of the day for the majors, great hang time on that last punt from Clapatch. That time, Taylor just being really, really patient, 
making sure that he could put that first move on, slowing down right there. Once he got past that first gunman, really starting to pick up the speed. He had 16 yards per punt return before that one. So that one's certainly going to increase that average quite a bit for the young player. It's going to be a handoff of the middle, breaking a tackle and still going across for the first down. It's going to be Winston Hutchison. The senior out of Round Rock, Texas, gets even more yards here today. He's been great so far and just refusing to go down. Which is a trade that's been seen by a lot of the, er, a lot of the Trinity running backs, not just today, but this season. We're going to see Hutchison back again behind Tucker Horn, who is in the gun. Two receivers to the right, and looks like two to the left as well. Double tight end set. Horn looking around, now going to take the snap. It's going to be a handoff. Hutchison going out to the right side, breaking one, breaking two, and finally getting brought down at about the 30-yard line. And going to set up fourth and about six or seven with 3.24 to go in the first half. Going to see another two receiver set. Horn back. It's still going to be Hutchison over to Horn's right now instead of right behind him. Hutchison going into motion. Horn takes a snap. Pump fakes, looks, fires deep, and it's just out of reach. Almost hit BJ Rainey there in the end zone. He had to reach out for it, and in the end, just could not get there. But absolutely fantastic defensive coverage by the Millsaps majors here as we look at the replay. Now we see Tucker Horn throw that little shoulder fake to the underneath route. So often this year, it's freed the guy on that wheel route. That time, BJ Rainey wasn't very clean out there. Number 21 defensively, Reed Hopkins, wasn't beat at all on that. So not a ton of space for the wide receiver to come free. And after that big stop, the Millsaps Majors defense continues to do things really well, bringing Tucker Horn down behind the line of scrimmage on what was a third and five. So now the Tigers faced with a fourth and about seven here, but the offense gonna stay on the field. We'll see a replay here, just tracked down from behind. He had a little bit of space out in front of him, but nice job from these majors closing in on that space. That was Nathan Johnson out of Shriver, Louisiana, getting that stop. Horn actually going to take this snap. He's going to look. He's going to get brought down from behind. Going to be number one, Adrian Turner. Two sacks so far in the year, and he's going to get another one here today. Huge play for Millsaps to get the turnover on downs. And now the Trinity defense is going to have to come back out. And yeah, couldn't see much in regards to the secondary and receivers from that last angle. Tucker Horn just trying to extend the play, but on a fourth and seven, not really a position in which he was gonna scramble and try and pick it up on the ground. I think maybe he might have had a guy coming open over the middle of the field, but the majors, again, this defensive front and that box especially, doing a nice job of providing some pressure up front over the last couple of possessions. It was the same thing again on that last one, that fourth down. Tucker Horn might have had someone open over the middle, but I think there was just too much traffic in the pocket for him to see it cleanly and try and get the ball out. Jennings' pass to Connor Ladner was incomplete. Diving catch over the middle just could not keep it hauled in. And now we're going to see Jennings again in an empty formation. Two to, or, or sorry, two to the left, three to the right. Jennings takes the snap. Pressure coming, has to scramble out of it. He's going to throw it, and it's going to be incomplete. Again, intended for Wiley, but could not haul it in. Just bounced right off of his hands. 
And that's why coaches always say, make sure to catch with your hands and not your chest, because stuff like that happens. And it is going to set up third down and 10. And certainly just trying to get up field a little bit too quickly before he actually had the ball secured. But it was an interesting set right there, as you mentioned. Trips to the right, twins on the left, but they were split out so wide that it required that those corners were out there in a little bit of a mismatch while those linebackers remained on the inside. As Jennings threw up a little bit of a prayer, trying to scramble around on, I suppose, to his own left to the near side of the field towards us up here in the booth. That one sets up a fourth down. That was Ladner who is the intended receiver. Tapping the helmet saying that he needs a sub there. And that was 93. Harris Good going in pursuit of Jennings. Forcing that pressure and it is going to be another punt for Millsaps here. They have had a very long day on special teams. This one is away cleanly, however. Taylor going to get the snap at about the 11-yard line, or, or, or sorry, get the kick at the 11-yard line, and takes it down to about the 24 before being finally brought down. And what you'd mentioned earlier, Caleb, talking about Klapich, the fact that he's received a couple of honors so far this year, really starting to show his last couple of punts have been absolute beauties, great hang time on them. That time, the, the gunner is able to get down there and able to bring down Will Taylor without a huge return. So now Trinity just past their 25-yard line. The offense will take over. Here, still in the first half, just a minute 25 before the break. Horn still out there. I believe that's Carmouche to his right. Yes, it is. Carmouche is going to be play action. It's going to be a throw complete to Carter Self. Self spins out of another tackle, spins out of another, and is finally brought down after a gain of 12 to set up a, another first down. And Trinity going in the hurry up here. Very interesting to see. 113 remaining here in the first half. Trinity only with one timeout. Horn takes a snap, drops back a couple steps, going to throw it deep, intended for Merrifield, and this time it's underthrown. So after going overthrow, 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 now it's an underthrow on one of those fly routes. And that one, not the worst ball. I think that one, an opportunity for a receiver to at least come back to it. The issue there, Merrifield just didn't get his eyes around soon enough. By the time he did, he had overrun it to the point where he wouldn't have been able to adjust to it. See Horn's numbers on the day. Still wonderful, 16 of 23, those three touchdowns, but not a ton of yardage. Horn scrambling out of pressure and finally going to get that one away. Almost taken down about three times there by a couple of different Millsaps receivers, or sorry, defenders. As this game has gone along, certainly some more pressure in the backfield. We see it again here, just remaining attached to Horn's hip. Ultimately, he's forced to get that one away. Had some receivers coming back in the area. He was just throwing that one so off balance, he couldn't get a lot of mustard on it. Horn back a few yards deep in the gun. Running back to his right. Two receivers on either side. Horn going to take the snap, going to drop back three. Looks, pumps, fires out to Carmouche. Carmouche jumps out of the way of one tackler, but is brought down, barely able to gain two. So after a nice first play from scrimmage, picked up that first down on this possession, Major's defense kind of returns to form over their last handful of possessions. Kind of like the gentleman's sweep. The gentleman's three and out. First down for the Tigers offense, but then that next set just not going anywhere. So Eli Gaiman out on the field for, I think, a third consecutive possession at this point. Gaiman did not punt last week at Southwestern. He's had a couple here today, and this one's a good one. It's going to take a couple of favorable Millsaps bounces, so it is picked up and down at the 15-yard line, or sorry, 25-yard line. 
And that will be the end of the first half. Your score, Tigers 28, Majors nothing. What an absolutely fantastic offensive showing we have seen so far. And we are going to be back in just a few minutes here after the halftime break. We're going to cover some of the major points of the first half. And we will be back here on Tiger Network. Don't go anywhere. Second half, about 20 minutes away.
coming out of the halftime break. Trinity is getting ready to continue. Hopefully the momentum that they had after the first half, 28 to nothing is your score here from San Antonio, Texas. My name is Caleb Reed along with Luke Terry doing color. And Luke, of course, I feel really bad for forgetting about this, especially on, on alumni weekend with so many former students and players here. But 16 years ago, not today, but yesterday, we witnessed one of the best plays uh, definitely in Trinity history, maybe in all of D3 history, with, of course, the infamous uh, Mississippi miracle down in Jackson, Mississippi, whenever yeah. Trinity got to walk it off in spectacular fashion. Yeah, and I think you're certainly right about that, Caleb. We'd be remiss to mention one of the greatest plays in the history of the sport, arguably, at the collegiate level. A huge, huge thing for this team and program's identity. I know if you walk through the halls of the athletic department, you have a lot on display that honors what happened in Jackson. Certainly have to shout out the alumni that were members of that team, that were members of that extraordinary play. Hard to face off against Millsaps in any sport, especially in football, and not at least mention that wonderful, wonderful play. But as you mentioned, additionally, a great first half from this Trinity team, specifically a wonderful, wonderful first quarter, put up 21 points. And then it was the start of that second quarter where they kept things rolling, were able to get on the board again in the first half of that second period. But then things slowed down for him a little bit. Not sure Coach Urban would be too satisfied with the way that they finished that half, especially offensively. A couple of possessions where this Millsaps major defensive unit were able to get some stops, force Tucker Horn off the field. I think that this offense is going to need to get in the end zone quickly here to start the second half to get that momentum going back in their favor. It's exactly the opportunity that they're going to have as the return team jots out there for the first time this afternoon. But in all honesty, the story of the day has been the defense side of the ball. Name we called a ton. Well, a couple of names we've called a ton are Carson Bird, Harris Good, Jacob Munoz, and of course, Caleb Harmel. It's that defensive box that it's kept this majors team with a zero up on the scoreboard. And they're giving this offense as much opportunity as they can here this afternoon. B.J. Rainey and Legend Grigsby back to return this kick. It's going to be Rainey who gets this one, cuts back inside at about the 30-yard line and gets up to the 32 before being brought down by the majors. I believe that was James Jones, the linebacker, bringing him down. And, of course, you mentioned the robbery between Trinity and Millsaps. Last time out, Trinity defeated Millsaps 53-7 absolute blowout and if the first half is anything to go off of we may be seeing that again but on the flip side this is a incredibly close rivalry all time 43 times that these two teams have met over the course of history and almost a dead even tie 21 and 22 is the record for trinity as this is going to be a handoff going off to the left side it's going to be a gain of somewhere about six or seven there for Hutchison. But again, this is an incredibly close series and an incredibly historical one. This is the team that Trinity has played the second most all time. Only other team that Trinity has played more is Austin College with a very impressive 82 games all time. It's going to take a while before... Trinity Millsaps gets anywhere close to that. This is going to be another great run up to midfield by Hutchison. And really, the ground game has been there all afternoon for the Tigers. It's another big difference in this year's team, the identity of the team compared to the last couple of seasons. Obviously, the entire offensive unit has been better this year. But it's really started with that offensive line, that group up front, just getting pushed that we hadn't seen in previous seasons. 
They've had it all afternoon. Of course, the entire offense has been great. Horn has been great at quarterback. It's just been a couple of overthrows on some some home run plays that if they hit them, then I think the offense and this coaching staff would probably be a little bit happier, probably have a couple more scores on the board at this point. Okay. They've come out here this afternoon in the second half and gone back to establishing themselves on the ground, and already they're close to that Millsaps 40-yard line. A great run there by Carmouche is going to set up second down and three. A little bit less than two minutes already gone here in this third quarter. This has been a very fast football game as it's going to be Horn in the back. Carmouche to his right. It's going to be a handoff. No, read option, and Horn takes it himself. Going to get across for the first down. Got landed on a little bit awkwardly there, but thankfully everybody gets up okay. Yeah, not in a especially hard or egregious hit from the linebacker right there. I believe that it was number 24 for the majors who stepped up in that spot. Again, not on the too deep this afternoon, but I know all afternoon long the majors have had some guys step up. Called number 24's name a couple of times, Luke Bridges, freshman out of Florida for these majors. Just maybe a little bit of an unnecessary hit. And for anyone supporting the Tigers, don't want to see Tucker Horn wearing anything that he doesn't necessarily have to. Mentioned, of course, the youth a couple of times earlier on in the broadcast, but also mentioning the fact that uh, Bridges is from Florida. A lot of players are local. Only one player uh, on the 2-deep is from outside of the South. Uh, that player, of course, being from Ohio. But that's one of the great things about D3 is that you get a lot of regional players, uh, get a lot of people who are very close to home. As Speaking of close to home, Tucker Horn, coming out of Graham, Texas, is going to be getting a, another run here. And he's been using his legs a lot more this year, especially compared to last year. Uh, he's been definitely, or, or, or definitely a lot more mobile. I think he's been very intentional. He's been very decisive is what I've noticed in the difference in Tucker's horn or Tucker Horn's game last year versus this year. I think he moved a lot as we see another completion. This one to Merrifield That's who turns up field and runs away from the defense just darting between the majors defenders. Caught that one on what was a little bit of a tunnel screen and then just took off for the corner outrunning everybody. Earlier in the season, we got to see the replay here. It might be that his knee was on the ground when he caught it. You see the line judge right there not blowing the play dead. Might want to see another, another shot of that screen after we get a... This one looks like it's coming back, and I think it is. I think that knee was down, and yep. They're still talking about it, but everybody's moving backwards. We're going to get another replay here. But earlier on in the year, uh, that knee was very, very close. Couldn't exactly tell. It looked like the knee probably was on the ground. He was rising up as he was catching the ball. So it was just a matter of timing. And Some more muted cheers maybe you can hear at home. They are going to confirm it as a touchdown. And, and earlier on in the year, of course, we got to interview both Tucker and Ryan. And, and one of the things that Tucker Horn said one of Ryan's biggest strengths was, was just being great at the quickness, the footwork, and just being able to move around. And he really showed it there on that play. Yeah, just great start, stop, speed. Caught that one almost with the knee on the ground. I'm not sure if that was the discussion that the referees were having. It looked like someone put a flag away in their pocket. So maybe no one on that group or in that group saw Ryan Merrifield's knee close to the ground when he caught the football. We'll see one more replay of it right here. Looks like he's coming up as he's catching the football, but really from that distance can't entirely tell if he's down or not. Again, that line judge was in that shot. Looked like he had a good viewpoint, good vantage point of it, but obviously didn't call him down. And 
Trinity scores quickly here to open the second half. Just what I think they wanted to see after those last couple of possessions of the second quarter. Definitely. After kind of getting a little bit of a bunch of empty possessions there, having a few punts, Trinity finally, finally gets that quick strike that they've been looking for. And also something that I've just now noticed down there on the sideline, Tucker Horn has just put on the blue shirt. His day is done. So whenever we go back out on offense, we are going to get to see Ryan back out of Austin, Texas, coming back out. A great, great day for Tucker Horn. 18 of 26 so far today, 187 yards and four touchdowns. Absolutely incredible day for the fifth-year senior who leads Division Three in, or, or sorry, who leads the SAA in or in completion percentage second in Division Three. This is going to be a high kick by Huddle. It's going to bounce. That could have been disaster for Millsaps, but very luckily rolls on into the end zone. But just talking about Tucker Horn, he's currently in the lead of two career record categories and is also on pace to crush uh, a couple of single season records as well uh, for, for completion percentage and quarterback rating as well. So just an incredible 2023 campaign for Tucker Horn as his day comes to a close after that touchdown. Yeah, and we talk about Tucker. We talked just a moment ago about his mobility, the fact that he's run the ball a little bit more. I think, again, it's been the decisiveness. Last year, he was forced out of the pocket, forced to scramble a lot more. We talked about it in the first drive or in the first couple of plays. The offensive line has been much better this year, and I think that – really lends itself to the improvement in his play. He's been upright. He's been able to get or at least stay in the pocket. But one of the big things is I think he returned to what he did so well two years ago in his first full season as a starter. He was just in rhythm. All the time, it was a quick drop. He got the ball out on time. He went through his progressions quickly. I think there's a combination of both of those things. The processing is certainly better. The decision-making is better. But it's because he's back in a mindset where he wants to get the ball out in rhythm consistently. And that's really when he's been at his best this year. As that pass is incomplete, we also got to talk to Coach Urban about Tucker. And, and of course, Coach Urban, obviously very, very highly supportive of his starting quarterback, as you do. But, but also he made sure to mention the fact that you know, Tucker's high completion percentage also comes because of the great receivers that Trinity has as well. There have been some fantastic plays made by the offensive pass catchers so far this year. Another great play there made by the Trinity defense. That's going to be number 19, Devin Gant, who gets that stop there on Millsaps. But just overall, Trinity's offense has been clicking so great throughout the year. And it has really allowed scores like we're seeing right now. 35 nothing here with nine minutes to go. Or sorry, ten minutes to go in the third quarter. Just a very, very efficient day in all aspects. We're going to get a stoppage here. And it's going to be a timeout by Trinity. I think that Klavich again had some issues hanging on to that ball, even though the play was blown dead. So slightly lucky there for Millsaps that it did not end up going ahead. Yeah, maybe just aware of the fact that the whistle had blown dead wasn't concentrated on securing that one after the snap came. But of course, in the context of this afternoon's affairs, a couple of bad snaps, a drop on the first punt attempt of the day. So something that we'll consistently keep an eye on is the long snapping in the punting unit. It's definitely something to take note of. And whenever you have issues like that, that just keep on going wrong and going wrong and going wrong. It can really affect the confidence, especially of players that are you know, younger as we've seen. This one is good as Klapich is able to get it away. It's going to be taken in and got a good hole on the outside. Still going. 
That is up to the 30-yard line for Cam Heron. The first year wide receiver out of Abilene, Texas, just a few minutes away from my hometown. So great to see somebody out there from the big country. And now we are going to get to see Ryan Back getting his first snaps of the day. 84% completion percentage on the year, three touchdowns and 305 yards. Went six for eight last week with 138 and two touchdowns at Southwestern. And so far this season has played all but one game. So very impressive, not just for him, but also, again, for Trinity being able to bring him out here week after week. As this is going to be a good run up the middle, still on his feet and up to the six-yard line. That is Winston Hutchison with the big run up the middle, and Trinity is in the red zone once again. Making things easy for Ryan as he checks into the game. Just go ahead and give it to your running back on your first play from scrimmage. Hutchison tripped up just a little bit as he broke into the secondary, but it was by the time he had already gained a full head of steam, seven or eight yards gained already. It took two members of that major secondary to ultimately bring him down, but not before he was well in the red zone. It's going to be a throw. Caught! In the end zone for the touchdown, Cole Manego managed to haul it in almost parallel to the ground. And what an incredible play by Ryan Back and the Trinity offense to continue to extend this lead. Yeah, and Back just recognizing that there's not a whole lot to the near side of the field. He opted to break the pocket. I think one of those majors linebackers got out there shadowing him, trying to keep him in check, but he just slowed things down, got his eyes back upfield, recognized Manego coming open. There wasn't a ton of separation, but he did a really nice job of just putting that out in front of his receiver. And again, you talked about the fact that Coach Urban has given props to this receiver core. You see him on the screen right there. Just Nice, strong hands from Cole Manego, who focuses on this one at the point of catch, hauls it in, gets that knee down inbounds, securing himself a touchdown. Fantastic play by the Trinity offense. That is going to be Manego's seventh touchdown of the season. Absolutely incredible day for him. And that is going to be the fifth passing touchdown so far today by Trinity. They have really had a fantastic air attack so far this year, and they have been really efficient. Best in the SAA and second in the NCAA in terms of completion percentage, of course, but just the offense in general has been rolling. Second in the SAA, 16th in the nation for their total offensive yards per game. This has been a team that has had some incredible offensive performances so far, and they are not slowing down today. Oh, and you mentioned Cole Manego hauling in his seventh touchdown of the season right there. Already has eclipsed his total yardage from last year by a pretty decent margin as that one is coughed up on the ground. Going to give Trinity again. Ball comes loose. Coughed up on the ground. It's going to remain Millsap's ball, but it was lost on actually fielding the kick, and then it was knocked loose again. That's going to be number seven, Tay Hills. And, yeah, lost it on the tackle there, and then it was recovered. I can't see the number. I believe that was number zero, so that's either Connor Rucker or Nehemiah Colson. But either way, almost disaster there for Millsaps. Able to get it. And now we're going to see, see Zion Anders in the backfield. It's going, to be a, or it's going to be read option, and that one is going nowhere. Maybe a gain of one before being stuffed by the Trinity defensive line. Yeah, and from our angle right here, it looked like there had been a pretty big gap that opened up. But it's just the quickness of this box that makes it so difficult to beat them. There was room right there, but they closed those gaps so quickly. As you mentioned, Anders ultimately maybe getting a yard out of it after it looked like he would be able to scramble for at least five. 
Richardson going to take off with it? No, he is not. He is going to go down. That is going to be a big loss of yardage there for the Trinity defense. A.J. Townsend able to bring him down that time. The senior out of Spring, Texas, gets his third tackle for a loss of the season. And what a play that was. Was not fooled at all. And now it is going to set up third down and 14. Anders in the backfield, going to fake the handoff, now going to take off with it. He's got a gap, and he's going to go up to about the 18-yard line before going down a few yards short of the first down line to gain. That's really the benefit of those tackles for loss, Caleb. And uh, we've got a player down here, number 52 of Trinity. That is... That's going to be James O'Gunran. That is not good. Um, O'Gunran has been a pretty reliable player for Trinity so far this year. Six games, only missed a game so far this year. Had seven tackles last week in a tackle for a loss. We are going to be back in just a few minutes after they finish tending to him. Welcome back to Tiger Network. This punt is away, and it is going to be taken in. Got a good gap on the right side. Still going. That's a good hole. Blockers ahead of him. He's still going, staying on his feet, and up to the 21-yard line yet again for Heron. He has had two massive punt returns so far today, and he's only had them in the second quarter, or, or second half, sorry, so far incredible day for the freshman wide receiver as we're going to get that replay. And it seems like he's really enjoyed this near sideline. That one, again, a pretty solid punt, but he took it. Coverage team maybe out kicked a bit right there, gave him the opportunity to hit his full speed, and he's been moving really, really quick. Back. Play action, rolls out to his left. Pass is complete. He's running toward the end zone. Touchdown, Trinity. What an incredible play there by Tyson Boat. And another touchdown on the day, not just for Ryan Back, but this Trinity offense to extend the lead even further. 48 to zero here in the third quarter. Yeah, one of the big things that we've noted over the years as the starters come out of the game, it's really about getting these guys into a rhythm. Obviously, in that last possession, Ryan Back handed it off to Hutchison to start things off, get it going on the ground, and they got him outside of the pocket. And then to start this drive, they get him on a little rollout. He got it to his tight end, and Bope did the rest of the work, diving for the pylon, making sure that he got his first touchdown of the season. A great job. As you see, a nice fake right there. Maybe got the cameraman just a bit too. But Bope had a lot of work to do, catching that one before the 15 and then just barreling down, diving for the pylon, getting in. That was 24. We've called his name a couple of times so far today. Luke Bridges, who tried to make the tackle, just could not get the wrap up in time. And Bope celebrating there on the sidelines with the rest of the team. He wasn't able to celebrate the play before because... He had to do the blocking for the field goal, but now finally able to get onto the sideline and celebrate with the rest of his team. As we get ready for this kick return here, 
Looks like we're getting a little bit of a different look here uh, in terms of the Millsaps returners. Tay Hills appears to be out. Uh, Butler is still in, and we've got number six. That's going to be either Tamias Mason or Brian Shaw, uh, wide receiver and defensive back, respectfully, back there. So it looks like Hills, after coughing up the ball twice there on that last kick return, uh, is going to be on the sidelines for this one as Huddle gets ready to boot this one away into the wind just a little bit. It's a high kick, spinning end over end, taken in at about the 10-yard line. Butler takes it. Cuts out to the near sideline, breaking a tackle, now turning around and still going. And massive tackle there by, that's going to be number 33 of Trinity. Jaden Powell, it looks like the defensive back who wrapped him up high. Almost thought for a second it was going to be a face mask or a horse collar call. Thankfully was not. And great job there, able to wrap up and prevent what, or what looked like it was going to be a pretty huge gain before Trinity managed to close it down. Yeah, so click, or so frequently when you see returns like that, a guy goes one way, gets stopped, decides to break it back the other direction. That's really when those running lanes open up because everyone on the coverage team is out of sorts, but that time it was just great pursuit all over. That Anders one's on the ground. The football, diving for it, and it's going to be Millsap's football, it looks like, unless Trinity was able to knock it out after the dive. And Zion Anders is still down on the ground. It is going to be Millsap's ball. I can't see who recovered it yet. couple of players in the way. Looks like it was potentially number 11. That might be D.B. Bennett, the tight end. But, yes. Yep, yep, D.B. Bennett, the tight end. And not entirely sure what happened to Anders there. It looked like he kind of went down a bit awkwardly. Cannon Starkey was there to forced the fumble, or at least he was in the area. That was the first number that I saw on that replay. And uh, we're going to take this little break to kind of just give a couple updates on things that are going on around Division Three at the moment, halftime. Mary Harden-Baylor up 7-3 to three over Harden-Simmons. That is going to be one of the biggest games of the week. Looking around at the rest of the top 25 uh, in SAA competition, Barry is currently destroying Hendricks 43-6 to uh, there at the start of the third quarter. Of course, Trinity is going to be playing Hendricks not next week, but the week after final game and final home game of the regular season. For Trinity. St. John's, who Trinity's only loss is to on the season. Uh, of course, that week one overtime loss is currently up 49 0 uh, in their game just a little bit before halftime. As we are going to get back into it here, Gray Jennings is. Back in the gun, going to take the snap, looks, fires, and it is complete. And Trinity immediately swarms him. That is going to be number zero, Connor Rucker, the senior wide receiver out of Oxford, Mississippi. Six catches so far this year, uh, heading into this game, 67 yards. And he's going to get another few there. And a little tidbit about Millsaps that I found very interesting whenever doing the research for this game. They've actually got a pair of brothers on this team. Uh, Gray Jennings, of course, the starting quarterback. And number 18 on the defense, that's Cole Jennings, one of the defensive tackles. Both of them out of Op Mississippi, or sorry, Op Alabama, uh, are brothers. Uh, Cole, of course, being the older by about a year or so. 
and very good to see both of them on this Millsap team. And it's always cool whenever you get a story like that, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I think you see that a lot at this level. A lot of family choosing to stick together, play on the same team. I know that Coach Rich Duncan at Rhodes College in the SAA, his son currently playing defense for him on that squad. Even here at Trinity have a couple of family members, Tucker Horn, his brother Raider Horn, playing on the defense and playing a lot on special teams this year. See him number 25 on that defensive line at the bottom of your screen trying to get pressure. This kick is away by Klapich, and it bounces at about midfield. Going to take a lot of favorable Millsaps rolls, and they're just going to let this ball go as far as they want, all the way down to the 24-yard line, which is where Trinity is going to be getting this ball. We're going to get to see Ryan back coming back out again. And he has had a great season so far, of course. I mean, you know, these are some pretty good numbers that you don't really expect to see from, you know, QB2. But he has had, you know, a season that is, you know, really been something that I don't think that a lot of people expected. Yeah, and he had his number called really early on. Obviously, that game up at St. John's week one was a really interesting one in a lot of regards. You go on the road to play a top ten opponent. You have some not favorable conditions weather-wise. I know coming from San Antonio, it's hard to believe, but a huge hit right there on Ethan Boyer jars that one loose. But obviously there was a lot of cramping and a lot of conditioning issues in week one, and we saw Tucker Horn leave that game, and this coaching staff was comfortable bringing Ryan into that one because of the way that these guys work together. And I think that Tucker Horn speaks very highly of his receivers, but everyone in this quarterback room speaks very highly of each other too. And over the last few years, they've gotten the opportunity this coaching staff has as Grigsby breaks that one around the right edge and stays in bounds. Just great balance on the sideline, able to keep himself upright and then getting back to full speed before ultimately being pushed out. But it's really more than anything else, just the play calling. Once these second guys come in, this offense really takes a very, very balanced approach. And when you keep guys in there because you have so many talented players coming in, in addition to your backup quarterback, it makes their job certainly that much easier. On that last play, the Trinity sideline calling for maybe a potential horse caller there on Grigsby. Didn't get it, of course, as now Grigsby again going to get this run. Spins away and able to somehow get yardage out of that play. Looks like it was going to be a loss there before Grigsby just did what he does best, staying on his feet and managing to turn what could have been a you know one, two-yard loss into a three, four-yard gain. That's one that this team does incredibly well, making the most of whatever situation they're given. We talked to Coach Urban about that. That's one of the things that he really, of course, prioritized. And another thing that he really mentioned was not really focusing on external factors, not letting or, or, or not trying to focus on the team across the sidelines and just playing their game. Um, because, of course, in a few games last year during the St. John's game, he mentioned that the main reason why they lost is because they stopped focusing on themselves and they were more worried about what the team across from them was doing. And... One of the big keys to success that he told us was just focusing on Trinity, not really worrying about the team on the other sideline and just worrying about the team in Maroon in this case. As we're going to get to see back in the gun, it's going to be Johnny Milo now next to him. His first time, I believe, that we've called his name. It's going to be a drop back. Going to be a completion to Rainey. Rainey's still going and up to, that's going to be about the 12-yard line before going down. And player very slow to get up there for the defense. And they seven, I believe that is Rankins who we've called a couple of times so far today. Not entirely sure what happened there. And he is looking like he is in a good bit of pain. So we are going to take a little bit of a break here. Uh, we will be right back as they tend to him. 
150 left to go here in the third quarter. And Trinity leads 49 to nothing. We will be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody, to Tiger Network. Caleb Reed joined by Luke Terry here in San Antonio. After the injury to Rankins, we're going to get to see back out again. It's going to be a good pass out to Taylor and actually blown up there at the line by number 54 of the defense, Wesley Malone, the linebacker out of Tifton. And back so far had a pretty good day. Three completions for two touchdowns. That is a stat line that you absolutely love to have as a quarterback. As back is going to step back in the gun again. Milo to his left. Two receivers left, three receivers right. Back rolling out to his right. And he's just going to get rid of this one. Pressure coming hard there. It was Nehemiah Colson, the sophomore linebacker who was the lead pursuer. But a lot of Millsaps defenders managed to get through. Yeah, and Beck had some space in front of him right there, but I think understanding where the offense at is at on the field, right around that 10-yard line. Again, things really becoming compressed, even if he had continued to run. That secondary was doing a nice job in coverage. Not a whole lot was likely to open up. Decided to just throw that one away and live to see this next down. It's going to be a run up the middle, Milo. And that almost could have gone for big yardage. Or, or, or well, relatively big yardage. And it is brought down at about the two-yard line. Yeah, in the context of where they're at in the field, it is pretty big yardage. And it's even bigger yardage considering the fact that they had a first down to gain. That's exactly what Milo did. So he gives them a fresh set of downs here now from inside the five. Ryan Back still operating the offense this time. Ball being snapped from just about the two. Back is again in the gun. Milo right behind. Taylor out to his left. Monego to the right. It's going to be a handoff Milo, and he is going to walk it into the end zone untouched to make this a huge lead, basically out of reach at this point. 55-0 with the PAT pending here with 20 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, and Milo getting rewarded after a nice couple of runs, a nice really first possession of the afternoon, something that we've talked about on the broadcast but talked about extensively with coach urban obviously you have restrictions with travel and only so many guys can make it on the road and they have a great trio of running backs and hutchison carmouche and grigsby but 
the next couple of names on the depth chart behind him and Milo have been great all season long when they've gone or gotten on the field here in San Antonio. Milo really marking the exclamation point on that drive, getting into the end zone. And as you mentioned, Caleb, PAT pending, but that one through and extending the lead finally to 56 to nothing. As you mentioned, walking in just untouched right there, a little bit of a stroll on a pretty nice Saturday afternoon here in San Antonio. It was a penalty by Millsaps offsides. It was declined, of course, as the PAT was good. And so this is going to be a 56 to zero ball game here with 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Looks like back uh, does not have the, uh, the yellow jersey on yet. So we might see him for another drive or two here in the fourth quarter. But right now, Trinity is, uh, unless things take a very, very dramatic turn, which is very unlikely, Trinity is going to extend their SAA winning streak to 21 games. Uh, their last loss coming on March 6th in 2020 to Hendricks. That was a 3-13 to loss actually here at Trinity as this kick is going to be booted away. Going to be taken in by Millsaps, and that is going to be taken up to about the 21-22 yard line there by, I believe it's Tamias Mason. And... Yeah, Trinity has been incredible in the SAA so far. 37 and 7 all time uh, ever since 2017 whenever they joined the conference. And also on top of that, those seven losses, one of those was two Millsaps back in 2018, but so far it doesn't look like that's going to happen today. No, in a great position here this afternoon as you mentioned, just dominant in the conference over the last handful of years. It really was a Barry Vikings conference up until that point. I know they had won approximately five or so consecutive SAA crowns. Trinity, I believe two seasons ago, was able to dethrone them for the first time and standalone SAA champs did so again last year. They're more than on their way to doing so this season, having already beaten Barry just two games will remain in the regular season after this one. The Tigers scheduled to take a road trip, head to Swanee next weekend before returning to in their 2023 regular season campaign at home on the 11th of November against Hendricks. And then it's likely playoff time. I know you mentioned earlier this afternoon, Caleb, on the call, some of the other things, other happenings around D3 today, a really big game in the ASC, that matchup between Harden-Simmons and Mary Harden-Baylor that has big-time playoff implications. I think last time you checked in, it might have been right around halftime there. Mm -hmm. But going to continue while we're still on air here in San Antonio to update you on that one seven to three game as they're getting ready to return to action there in the second half. Two teams that have been great in the, in the ASC and two teams that Trinity played in the playoff last season. Yep. Trinity managing to beat Harden Simmons off of that incredible Incredible game by Ryan Merrifield, of course, that uh, that last-minute walk-off touchdown. And then, unfortunately, losing to Mary Harden-Baylor, of course, got revenge for it uh, earlier this year with that huge 35-16 victory. But now, all eyes turn to what is going on over in Abilene with Harden-Simmons down. A Mary Harden-Baylor win would definitely help Trinity's strength of schedule and again, has huge playoff implications, particularly with who Trinity might be facing in the first round. Certainly, certainly true about that. Harden Simmons with a loss on their year. They went up to the northeast of Lake Endicott and got blown out there. So a loss here today would give them two on the season. But if they were to win, then they would likely get 
the ASC conference automatic qualifier on the flip side, Mary Harden Baylor had a, ter- or excuse me, an absolutely terrible start to their season. 0 and three, but a really tough schedule, including having to come down here to San Antonio in week two, where they lost to Trinity by several scores. First time that Trinity's beaten them in over 20 years. Marriott and Baylor can find a way to win today. They'd likely set up a rematch, maybe even in the first round. But Trinity, if they can continue to take care of business, really well on their way to hosting a playoff game or maybe a couple if they can secure a 9-1 and regular season record. And then, you know, pending what happens with the selection process, likely that they see the champion of the AFC and considering the fact that they've beaten Mary Harden Baylor, if they'd see them again, I'm sure that Trinity would feel great about that. But I think that, you know, looking at the matchups that each of those teams have had the last couple of years, a rematch this year would certainly be a spectacular one. And so we have just seen the end of Ryan Back's day. Absolutely incredible day for him as this is going to be a run out to the near sideline and knocked out at about midfield. It's going to be Jackson Williams, the sophomore running back. He's the fifth name that we call this afternoon at the running back position. And another guy very similar to Johnny Milo, who has tremendous skill and ability, but has just been limited given the names that are ahead of him in the depth chart. When they've been here in San Antonio, the Tigers, that is, we've seen both of these sophomores really show up and show out what they're capable of. That's going to be Colin Bishop, QB number three, and he is going to get up to about the 49-yard line, I believe, of Millsaps. And a pretty good start for him so far. Bishop, the sophomore out of Childress. Hasn't had a ton of action so far this year, mainly because Back has been taking a lot of these snaps, although he has been getting in a few times. He did, of course, get an opportunity at Southwestern, I believe, as that is going to be another good run, spinning around and getting very close to the first down marker. Again, that's going to be number six, Jackson Williams. And one of the things, one of the difficulties whenever it comes to calling games like this is just trying to get all the names right. And, or, uh, and all the positions, right? But we'll be doing our best, uh, doing our best to keep everybody uh, in the right names and places here for the rest of the day. Bishop's going to be back in the gun. Williams just behind him. Receivers to the left and right. It's going to be a handoff. Williams who gets up to about the. 36, 37 yard line before going down. And one thing that's, you know, great about games like this, besides obviously big wins, is getting to see a lot of new faces that might not have gotten a shot in in other situations like this. We're getting to see a lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen, a lot of faces that that we'll be seeing in, you know, two, three years from now, kind of getting a little sneak preview of what they can do. Absolutely. I think that last part really hammers home the point. It's so fun to really familiarize yourself with the styles of these other players getting out on the field, you know, especially the running backs and the quarterbacks that come into the game. Milo and Williams obviously on now, the two sophomores. They have very different styles than Hutchison and Carmouche and Grigsby, who have different styles ones that differ from each other in that starting trio. And it's the same thing with the quarterbacks, right? Ryan Back comes in, and while the coaching staff wants to simplify things for these backup quarterbacks, the way they simplify things are still tailored to their specific styles, right? They got Ryan on the move because he's a mobile guy. He played middle infield in baseball when he was in high school at a Texas 6A public school. He's an incredible, incredible athlete, so they want to take advantage of that. Right now here on this drive, we're seeing the same thing with Colin Bishop. He's one of the only guys in the QB room that they're actually going to call designed runs for because he's also very athletic, but he's a little bit more of a bruiser. He's a big guy, has a bigger build, and he's 
going to be sturdy enough to take some shots. So they're going to be comfortable letting him roll out. And it's going to be interesting over the next couple of years, once Tucker departs, to see how they opt to continue play at the quarterback position because what we've seen in limited action out of all these guys is that they're all very, very capable. Of course, Tucker, in what is for sure his final year, his fifth year senior season, we're going to get to see Ryan back a lot next year. Looking forward to calling his name a lot as Bishop is going to roll out to his right, going to throw it over the middle, and looks like that is going to be a completed catch to number 20, Cole Kennedy. What an incredible play by the freshman wide receiver out of Austin. And an incredibly athletic catch. Going to get to see the replay there. Just pick that one off just before it got to the ground. And a fantastic play to set up first down and goal. Yeah, and a lot of real estate right around Canada right there. I'm sure if Bishop had that one back, he would certainly take a second opportunity just a bit underthrown, but a great job by his receiver to adjust and make sure he secured the catch for some huge yards. Milo fighting forward. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown, Tigers. And Johnny Milo with another rushing touchdown on the day. Yeah, and the line judge at the top of the screen was a little bit confused given the traffic right there. Somehow Milo finding a way to keep himself upright, kept his knees and elbows off the ground, and instead found his way into the end zone for the score. Absolutely incredible to see Milo able to just keep on fighting through that. And again, as we were talking about before, it's going to be very great to see you know, him getting RB1 roles, you know, in maybe next season, maybe the season after, we don't really know. But for now, it is just so great to be able to get this early look at uh, what the Tigers are going to be looking like in the future. But as we return to now, Trinity has now doubled uh, their minimum for the season. Uh, again, they've scored more than 30 points per game Every game so far this year, 63 points now on the day. And just a little a couple of notes on the season so far. Uh, for Millsaps in particular, um, even though they are not doing so well on the field, of course, they are doing well very off the field. Last year, uh, Millsaps had, I believe it was either 71 or 91 student athletes throughout the entire school, making the all-SAA uh, fall on a roll. 27 of those were on the football team. So absolutely incredible to see how Millsaps is really doing a great job at creating both athletes and students and really making sure to put the student uh, first and student athlete. Absolutely. I think you see it across the conference just – Competitive teams everywhere you look, but really, really competitive schools from an academic perspective as well. Millsaps on that list, Swanee, Hendricks, Rhodes, a ton of great institutions that make up this conference. And with that comes a ton of great student athletes. And I think sometimes we forget that there should be an emphasis placed on that student capacity, the fact that they're in the classroom as well as on the field or on the court week in and week out. They're splitting their time and they're, they're finding ways to excel in a number of different ways. One thing to mention uh, also about Millsaps, um, as we got to see that rush there by Jennings for about six yards, this is the first season of their head coach. Corey York uh, was the a uh, former uh, assistant head coach for the team for the last four years. Uh, also was a former coach at Mississippi College for about six years. And he has taken the interim role this year, uh, was the assistant uh, head coach as well as the offensive line coach last year. And uh, after the departure of uh, former head coach Isaac Carter, uh, who went to coach uh, the University of San Diego, which is an FCS school, uh, it's definitely been a little bit of a learning curve, but, you know, 
again, it's still the first season. Uh, still sort of learning the ropes, sort of. And there's still definitely time to sort of figure out the direction of the program moving forward with so many young players. Yeah, and I think, again, that last point, such a thing to hammer home. A ton of young players that coincide with the start of this coaching career. It's a nice throw from Jennings as he made a nice fake on that handoff, rolled out to the outside, and it was number eight coming open on the perimeter right there. Receiver. Brandon Butler. Brandon Butler with a nice grab and gain to pick up the first down and break into Trinity territory. So Jennings is going to be back here. Again, the freshman. Uh, we did see uh, one of their other quarterbacks, uh, the junior quarterback. Uh, cannot remember his name at the moment as Jennings breaks free from a couple of potential tackles. And that is, yep, that's going to be a deserving flag there. Jennings slid and got hit on the slide. And about four flags came in from every single direction. That is going to be a penalty on Trinity. Yeah, and as this game continues along, maybe some inexperience showing on the Trinity side as some second stringers and names further on down the depth chart come into play not typically out there. It looks like that was number 38, Cannon Starkey, who laid that hit on the quarterback. And a little bit of a conversation as he did so. Maybe not entirely intentional. I think something we see so often in plays like that where it's so hard for the defensive player to let up. There's no real malicious intent there, but when things are moving at full speed, having the recognition that someone's giving themselves up is a really tough thing to gather. Yeah, and Sarkey, of course, the senior uh, out of the Woodlands. Not not a mistake that you see a senior making a lot, especially on kind of a slow play like that. If it was a little bit faster, it might be, you know, something that wasn't so rare. But on a slow play like that, definitely a uh, a rare mistake, for sure. And it. Or, 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 and it was a targeting penalty, so I believe that we are going to see Starkey off here. That is a deep throw, and just out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. Tamias Mason almost got his fifth touchdown of the season. As, yeah. as we're going to get that replay there. He had a ton of space here at the back of the end zone. Jennings doing a nice job. I think at this point, you really just want to Figure out where you are on the field and try and settle in there. Obviously, that one carried him out of the back of the end zone, but I think if he established himself at that boundary, he might have had enough room to high point that football while he was still in bounds. But ultimately, it wasn't the case. Just an unfortunate miscue. Keeps Millsaps off the board for now. Jennings moving around. Throws! And no, almost caught, but just barely out of the hands of Connor Ladner. Two passes that almost went big as we got a flag down back in the pocket. And that replay that you just saw right before Jennings was able to get that ball off, I think you might have seen a pile down in that bottom right corner. It was just offensive linemen pulling down some of those Trinity defenders. That's what that call was about. It was a hold on the majors. We'll see the replay here, bottom of the screen, just to grab as that defender made that swim move into the gap on the inside. It could have been a couple of places to call it. There could have been called on Skylar Shank, the sophomore right guard. Also could have been on Peyton Parker, the right tackle, the junior out of Independence, Louisiana. But either way, it is a flag that moves them back 10 and sets up second down and 20. Jennings takes a snap, and it's batted away at the line. Fantastic defensive play there by number 97, Braden Ensley, the defensive lineman out of Waco, Texas. Just reached a hand up and managed to get it away. Intended for Blake Wiley, the receiver on the crossing route. And now, what do you even do here on third down in a mile? 
I don't know. I mean, again, it's a situation where the defense is in a real position to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. I think you just have to try and get the ball out quickly. Jennings manages to get it out to Wiley. Wiley managing to get around Raider Horn, as we mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, brother of Tucker, and gets it up to about the 29-yard line before finally getting down. And so fourth down and 12. On that third and long, you want to make things just a little bit more manageable for yourself. It's really what the majors did right there. Nice little pitch and catch. Get closer to the original line of scrimmage. Now instead of a fourth and 20 in a position you'd really have to punt, you can go for it here in the opponent's territory. Jennings back going to take the snap. Fourth down and 12. Pressure coming. He moves out of it. He's going to throw it deep on the right side, and it's incomplete. Well, technically complete, but out of bounds. Again, it was Connor Ladner. Just unable to get the feet in downs twice in a single drive. That one drifting much further out of bounds. I don't know if... Ladner's best reach would have been able to haul that one in. <laughs> nice pressure from the Trinity box in their pursuit of Jennings, keeping him on the run, and just too difficult of a throw to make. As that one continued to drift out of bounds. But about halfway through that last possession, I have a little bit of an update for you regarding the other game taking place in the state with pretty high stakes. Harden Simmons recovered a muffed punt from the Mary Harden Baylor Crusaders, were able to turn it into points and take a lead 10 to seven, about seven minutes left in the third quarter of that one. We've got a Millsaps player limping off, it looks like. That's gonna be number one on the defense, not on the offense. Adrian Turner, the defense alignment, looked to be holding uh, his leg, it appears after that run by Milo, I believe. Williams now to the right of Bishop. Now going out to the right side, breaks off one tackle, but is absolutely smothered by the Millsaps defense. It's gonna be Brian Shaw, the cornerback. And actually, I do apologize. It was not Colin Bishop that was in. It was number 12. That is going to be... I believe it's Will Vasky who checks in. One of the freshmen in this 2023 incoming class. Haven't called his name incredibly frequently. And he's going to go deep here on his third play. Was that a catch? And it looks like the referee on that sideline will credit it as such. There's a little bit of fighting on that sideline as I'm not sure the receiver, I think it's number 26, another freshman, that being Baron Calden, who high-pointed that football, went up over the top of the defender and was able to secure it. Definitely had that leg down in bounds. Oh, there's a flag on Trinity and it's gonna be going back. So despite the incredibly athletic catch, it is going to be coming back, unfortunately. But what an incredible play by the freshman as well, going up, going over the defender. And it is going to be holding by Trinity. So a very unfortunate chain of events there. But again, great, great connection there by uh, the two freshmen. Is Navasky gonna be back? Running back to his right. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Navasky unloads to the left side and incomplete, almost intercepted there by number 25. That's gonna be Michael Battle, I believe. And now battle is down. So while the major's training staff tends to him, we are going to be right back here on Tiger Network. Don't go anywhere. Still five minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this SAA matchup between the Tigers and majors.
Welcome back, everybody, to Tiger Network here after the training staff helps uh, battle off of the field. We are going to be back here to see the Tigers punted away on 4th and 20 after that holding call, unable to get the big shot played there. And so we are going to get to see Eli Gaiman back out again. Only 15 punts entering this game. Did not have to punt at Southwestern. Has punted a couple of times so far today as Butler trips and falls trying to turn the corner. And he is going to go down at about... His leg initially got caught up at about the 30-yard line, but he went backwards to about the 26, and looks like that's where they're going to spot him. So a very unfortunate loss of yardage there. Wait, no, they're going to spot it at, or spot it at the 29 now. So a little bit better form there. And so now Millsaps going to be getting the ball here. Got a different running back there off to the left side of Jennings. As it's going to take the snap, going to be going out to the left side. And that's a very good gain up the middle. Number 26, uh, Bryden Wesley Lasarge the running back there, the freshman out of Choctaw, Mississippi. And with a little bit over five minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter, Millsaps really hoping to avoid the shutout, or shutout here, despite their record, which says one and seven, um, and of course one and five in conference play, their lone win coming uh, on the road at Birmingham Southern. Uh, they have not been shut out so far this season. So definitely hoping to avoid that here as Jennings moves out to his right side. And that one is a little bit too short. Intended for Butler there. Looked like it was going to be a read option. But Jennings decided to throw it instead as Butler came open on the return. Just unable to hit him through it a little bit low. And for Millsaps, it's not been the best of seasons. Last, or, or last week, of course, their homecoming ended up losing the center. Uh, their most points scored um, in a loss. Or, well, actually, no, sorry. Uh, their third most points scored so far this season. Uh, they had a 21-27 loss on the road at Sewanee and then a 42-53 shootout loss against Hendricks. Very unfortunate that they could not come away with that game. Very rarely do you score 42 points and not come away with a victory. But either way, not a very happy homecoming for them last week. And then obviously all the things that have gone wrong this week is that is a run that is stuffed behind the line. I believe that's going to be number 99 of Trinity. Steel Herndon, the first-year defensive lineman out of spring. And now we are going to see the return of Ethan Klapich yet again here in the fourth quarter. As you mentioned, the record, their performance on the year, Caleb, I think it's Important to note, again, the fact that they have so much youth on the team, a young head coach as well. I think having those things in tandem with each other, you have a lot of hope that those two sides are going to grow together, that this young couple of classes is going to grow with this coaching staff and set a standard over the next handful of years. But you also have to note that the SAA is one of the most impressive conferences in all of D3 football. A ton of talent here in the South. And this week they're playing not just one of the best teams in the SAA, but one of the best teams in all of Division Three football in this Trinity side. Ranked right around that top five number all season long. And there's really nothing that they've done this year to disprove that. They've looked incredibly sharp here this afternoon as Jackson Williams just shows it's gonna off be a run top to the in speed. Jackson, nobody around. A huge touchdown. 74 yards to the house. 
Incredible play there by Jackson Williams. Thought that he had gotten bottled up about three times back there, and then he just broke through. Yeah, not much happening on the outside. Looked like there was a ton of traffic. Kind of naturally assumed Jackson Williams is going to get pushed out of bounds right there. Instead, he showed us an entirely different gear, and he just ran away from everyone. There was no one in the vicinity. Oh, no. There's a flag down, and it's on Trinity. It's going to be holding down at about the 30-yard line. And so that is going to move them back. So, so unfortunate there for Jackson Williams as we're going to get that replay here. Great vision able to see the blockers, but unfortunately the blockers did just a little bit too much for him. Yeah, and the way that he broke away from the rest of the field, you have to wonder in situations like that if that's a play that happened behind the running back if it would have made that much of a difference but either way the flag was thrown and it wipes away a huge play for the sophomore it's going to be johnny milo up to the 26 yard line there milo's had a pretty good season so far of course obviously he hasn't been getting the rb1 touches that we've been you know um highlighting the other running backs for of course but still milo's been very impressive and again he's only a sophomore which is very, very impressive. He does not appear to be letting the pressure of being a young player on this team really kind of get to him. As that is going to be a rush there by the quarterback. And it's going to be number 15 again. So that's going to be Bishop. Bishop is back in now. Yeah, it looks like it's just one of those read option scenarios. But again, given the fact that most of the other quarterbacks on the roster so frequently choose to give to the running back that key that he's making this decision off of, usually that defensive end is typically going to bite on the running back, gives him the opportunity to just tuck it and run it himself more often than not, as we see again right there. Bishop going to get it up to about the 36-yard line here, and with minute 52 to go, it is going to be a first down. And so with a minute 52 to go, looks like Trinity just trying to run it, trying to run the clock out here as we're going to see Williams coming back in for Milo. Of course, probably taking a break after that long run. Yeah, we saw him on the sideline, I think, in the aftermath of that pen penalty call because of the hold, trying to catch his breath, clearly pretty disappointed out there, but not letting him, letting it phase him right here as he makes a couple of nice moves to the outside to gain a couple more yards on the afternoon. Williams, a great job able to get outside there, and so that'll be second down and five. One more thing uh, to mention. I know that it's been a little while since we talked about it, and I know that it's been a little while since we've seen him. But going back over to Tucker Horn, he, again, this season has just been incredible. And so far, as that's going to be a flag coming in from way far away, likely another holding call here on Trinity. But just getting to look back at uh, the record books, of course, uh, so far this season, he is on pace to overtake uh, the completion percentage mark, which was set by himself a couple of years ago, but also to break a, a record that has stood for over 20 years in terms of quarterback rating, uh, 191.8 QBR so far this year, uh, would easily eclipse the 184.9 set by or, or set by former Trinity quarterback Roy Hampton whenever Trinity went to, uh, of course, the Division Three championship back in 2002 whenever they finished runner-up. As that run is going to lose about one. But just this has been a historic year for Trinity, not just in terms of individual player performance, but also in terms of the 
in conference, out of conference results, and just the team results in general have been absolutely fantastic this season. Yeah, when you can compare a guy's single season performance to another player like Hampton who was present when this team and this program was at its peak right around year 2000 when they win to the national championship game and finish as runners up obviously you're doing something really really well and I think so far this year Trinity has proven that they belong in that type of discussion as one of the nation's best teams and as the regular season continues to wrap up just two games left on the current schedule for the Tigers, I'm sure their attention's going to be starting to turn towards that playoff, towards the matchups that they'll have. And regarding that, we'll give one last update on that Harden Simmons and Mary Harden Baylor game. Harden Simmons scoring a second time, another touchdown in the second half to extend their lead to 17 to seven. So they're looking like they're in pretty good shape with just about a minute left in the third quarter, trying to secure that one and likely an automatic bid to the NCAA championship. But Trinity here in San Antonio is well on their way to doing the same. Another SAA win this afternoon and almost certainly are going to lock up that SAA automatic qualifier bid for the playoff this year. The streak extends to 21 games. The series now all-time against Millsaps tied at 22-22. And overall, what an incredible performance. Of course, as we talked about with Coach Urban, all three phases of the game today really coming together very well. And we are going to take a slight little break here as the, uh, as the players down on the sideline Sing the or, 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 uh, sing the school fight song before we return to give our closing thoughts on the day. So don't go anywhere. Still got a few more things left to say here on the Tiger Network. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Welcome back to Tiger Network here. Caleb Reed and Luke Terry closing out this one. Tigers win it 63-0 to here at home, their second-to-last home game of the season, third-to-last game overall. And just as you can see by the stats, Trinity really dominated in all three phases, time of possession, passing, of course, rushing especially. Just the offense was clicking, defense was clicking, special teams was clicking. Everything seemed to be going right for Trinity so far today. Absolutely. And I think the thing that sticks out to me the most, obviously the offense played well, and obviously the defense held up on their end. The team started so well, though, in both of those facets. The offense got into the end zone. Their first three, maybe four possessions of the game, the defense didn't allow any points for the entire game, and especially to start it during those same moments despite the fact that they hit a little bit of a road bump at the end of the second quarter, they really found their groove again in the second half, got things right, corrected the ship, and finished really strong. And I think that's important. Obviously, you want to play full games. You want to start strong. You want to finish strong. But you want to be able to have corrective action. You want to be able to make adjustments when things aren't going the way you want them to. And you want to finish games really, really well. And I think that the Tigers did that today. They came out well. Maybe they faced some issues. Their rhythm was disrupted a bit, but they answered the call. They figured things out, and they ended up in a 63 to nothing victory this afternoon. And I think when you can walk away with that, you're going to be very happy. For Millsats, it's going to be their fourth straight loss of the season. Drops to 1-8 and eight on the year. they got one more game after this, heading 
back over to Jackson, Mississippi. They will be playing the Southwestern Pirates, who Trinity got the opportunity to sink last week. Uh, and meanwhile, for Trinity, of course, they're going to go on the road to Tennessee to go and play the uh, Suwannee Tigers before coming back to play Hendricks in the final game of the season. Both of those games are definitely going to be good, uh, and it is going to be an absolute treat to be covering that final game, of course. But just going over some of the stats in the day, Tucker Horn, your starting quarterback, finishes 18 for 26, 187 and four touchdowns. Uh, Ryan Back, of course, also got two touchdowns, 47 yards off of four completions and six attempts. Uh, in terms of rushing, Legend Grigsby got a rushing touchdown, 61 yards for him off of five attempts. Winston Hutchinson led the day with 79 yards off of eight attempts. Unfortunately, no touchdowns for him. He got close a couple of times, but to no avail. Johnny Milo led the day in terms of touchdowns with two, uh, three, or, or three rushing touchdowns overall for Trinity, four or six passing touchdowns. A very good day for him. Uh, no receivers for Trinity going over 100 yards. Leader in that regard was Carter Self, who had 66, uh, as well as a touchdown. And overall, just a fantastic day for the Trinity offense. In terms of the Millsaps offense, Gray Jennings, 8 of 21 for 56 yards. Not the best day for him, but again, he is still a freshman. He's still got plenty of time to develop and figure out his rhythm and yeah overall just a fantastic day by trinity so any final words i i think again just hammering home the point that despite any disruption of the rhythm on offense the team overall responded they played a multifaceted game played well offensively played well defensively a huge huge day from the punt returners, I think that maybe flew a little bit under the radar here this afternoon. It was Taylor and it was Heron, who both had spectacular afternoons, set the offense up in really stellar field position. Obviously, there was a block by Caleb Harmel on one of the punts. But again, the fact that the offense came out so strong despite a disruption to their rhythm, they finished the game incredibly, incredibly well, came out well in the second half, and overall took care of business the way that they really needed to and should have this afternoon. And so that will do it here from San Antonio, Texas. The next time that we will be here, at the football field is going to be November 11th. Again, we're going to be facing Hendricks for the final home game of the season and the final game of the season. It is going to be senior day. But from everyone at Tiger Network, uh, of course, Luke Terry, my color commentator, uh, Josh down in the control room, Ryan as well, uh, of course, all of our cameramen, uh, cameramen and women uh, helping out. I've been Caleb Reed. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.